David Hurley, number 22. We're up to about number... That's about 20th spot in the men we're up to. Um, good run from Dave. Handy, probably handicapped out of it this year a little bit. Um, and the head, the headwind was always going to be bad news for him. Uh, just to describe what's going on, Dale, as you look, as you look over there, there's, there's just thousands, thousands of people here down here, but, uh, the runners just in disarray. They're just spent. Yeah. Uh, I think this is probably the worst conditions. I mean, apart from the fact that it's not hot, it's a nice cool day, but that wind is the worst conditions in the year, the race's eight year history. I'm quite amazed that Adam Jadie's run a sub 30 and a couple of weeks Sub 30 as well. He's a ridiculous talk. In fact, let's just talk about Adam Jady again for a moment. He started a minute behind Brett. Let's not forget that. These two have had a lot of six second gaps between them over the years. Jady put in not much preparation this year and he's passed Brett and beaten him by a minute. Yeah, yeah. Hit there's a lot more runners here. It looks like there's four runners all pretty close together. Talk us through what's happening here, Dale. Josh Grouse looks like he's going to come in and claim, I think it's 21st place, just outside the top 20. He's finished in the top 10 previously. Behind him, about 20 metres back, Josh comes up to touch the pole. Behind him is uh, Keith, Keith Kane. He gives five to what? his wife, Laura, there. It's his wife. Hopefully it's not his sister. Uh, uh, that's a good run off. His first year, off scratch. I think he's done pretty well there. Another familiar face whose name I forget at the moment. That's Steve Monaghetti, though. Uh, you, should, you should know him. You might know this next one, Jabs. Take, talk us through what's going Here's the, the two time defending champion, Shelley Clark. She has done pretty close to zero preparation, uh, and she knew it was going to hurt today, but I can see on her face that it is, it's hurt a lot. She's almost slow to a walk at the finish, and she is done. Sam Colvin, I think this is, he'll be happy with this, this is an impressive run, from California, he came in from California for the summer a couple of months ago to get some training in for the race, and he's done well, I hope we see him at another event in future years, off a handicap, he might do some damage. Now let's, well, two great stories as well, many great stories come from today, but the two wins, Adric Backmire has, it's been in the wings for so long, there's so many people wanted him to do it, and he's finally achieved it, but... The way Jacinta Angley earned that women's HBH that she's been so close to, probably lost by less than 10 seconds the past two years, that was um, that was an unbelievable finish. Uh, no. Um, to me, uh, the uh, I'm just going to check that this is still recording. It sure is. To me, the, the, that, the finish of that women's race was the, by far the best finish I've seen to an HBH run um, and just the, even if it wasn't for the win even if it wasn't for first place it wouldn't have been an amazing finish exactly what I was thinking greatest finish for any position in the HBA history uh, you think of Rouse and Flirrell's great finish a couple of years ago but uh, this was up a level on that here comes Luke Frost There's a couple of epic competitors here Luke Frost first of all in his first run uh, he's going well he's shoot, suited to the shorter stuff but with the handicap next year he'll, he'll be right he'll number 45 you'll watch for him now we're talking. This is one of the best stories I've seen in HBH history. Uh, I've forgotten the first name. Mrs. Hoskin. Mrs. Hoskin, that's, a, that's right. Just getting passed by Dave Uha on debut, number 46, but Mrs. Hoskin really should take a bow. Absolutely fantastic. You can hear the thousands of people. What a great example. It's what the uh, HBH is all about. Just encouragement, just, just promoting fitness. So it's fantastic that she's... Uh, She's done that. This is a great day today. I looked around the crowd earlier on, where just after Adric crossed the line, and I saw a, 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 a German family, an old, an old German mother holding a young baby child, and she just looked into that child's face with, as if to say, "There's hope in the world." And I think that's that's going to be the feeling around Germany today and for for years to come. I, I didn't I didn't see that moment. Uh, it was hard to place the German mum, but I can imagine there's so many Germans down here that's. It's, it probably did happen. It's just amazing. Uh, we've got a couple of competitors coming towards us now. It looks like... Uh, this will be Sam Chapman in front, about 200 metres to go. What are we looking at here? Rounding out the top 30 at the moment? Do you... Yeah, I'd say you'd be round about the mark there, Dale. I'd say late 20s, maybe number 30 on the on the dot. But uh, he's off scratch. It's his first year. Up, he ran it last year. Ran it last year. Ran it last year. Sorry, it's these sixes, mate. He's not six, mate. Just ignore me. Sam Chapman, though, number 41. A good run. I'd say with a little bit of a handicap next year, he just touched the pole. 
Yeah, he's looking fresh. I think he might be saving a bit for 2012. Here comes, uh, I think this is Emma. I can't remember the last name, but I think I'm right on that name. She's finishing her first stage match. It's a funny, unique feeling, that one. Your, your sense of achievement. And you look towards next year when you know the course of uh, Daniel Rucker behind. Really uh, jumped into the HBH with the enthusiasm. He ran one of the lead-up events and it's good to see him there across the line. And it'll be a uh, fantastic yeah. effort there by Daniel and uh, Emma. As we're looking down, there's still... still uh, I'm not sure how many runners are still to come. Uh, I think I can see someone in a white singlet. Certainly the... It's a just a bastard of a headwind, and it has put the hurt bag on the entire field here today. Uh, Dale was just checking to see how many runners to go. I'm pretty sure I can still see definitely one. Um, possibly a second. Well spotted there. We're here with uh, Melburnian. Melburnian. That's the word I'm going for. Josh Bergen. Josh, what have you thought of this? Is your first impression of the HBH? It is. I, this is my first venture down to the Glenelg finish line, and uh, I'm, I'm feeling really good about it. I'm thinking about running next year. Yeah, that's Maybe. what it's all about. You wouldn't be the first person to come watch one and then run it the following year, I tell you what. And what do you think of... There's probably, if we're looking around, I'd say 40, 45,000 people here. What have you thought of the crowd? Oh, it's, an, it's an absolute extravaganza down here. You just you can't walk anywhere. The runners just getting through the big crowd, and uh, it's it's an absolute amazing experience. Sure is. Uh, we're gonna get Dale Clark here to talk us home. I think there's uh, one of the NSC brothers getting mowing down by someone from behind. Big Josh and Essie. Yeah, is he gonna hold on for this? I think we're. Uh, I've just heard word that we're looking at placing number 47 at the moment. So we've got a, f a male field of close to 50. I don't know who it is that's chasing him down, but he is storming home. He's gonna get there. He does. Number 44. Oh, a powerful finish. What a run. run. Crosses. 44. Impressive finish. And again. Oh no! Well, I'm not sure what happens there. Number 44 chased him down and forgot yeah. to touch the pole. Well, I think we'll have to see some big decisions made on that. I'm sure justice will prevail. I think he'll hold on for that. Uh, to that uh, position because you don't want to penalise someone when you know they've crossed the line ahead. Uh, yeah. no, I couldn't agree more. I think it's more. What, when is the actual touching of the pole in a sprint finish? Is that is that that's going to decide it? Well, and then in that case, you've got who know who's on the inside. They're the one that's going to touch it. So I mean, if Claire Ashman, for example, caught Jack Sangley today, we would have had a situation where we look at who touched the pole first. I think that probably is something that needs to change next year. I don't know how many more we'd have. There's probably a few more runners. Uh, I don't think we've seen Leah Ashman cross the line yet. And Ange Shah. Uh, Le Leah Ashman, Angelique Shah look like they're still uh, making their way. I'm just going to check that this is still recording. It's pretty epic. Uh, sure is. 43 minutes of action here, folks. You've heard it. Dale Clark just uh, owning the commentary. It's, it's pretty obvious. I'm looking across and there's a National Beach Volleyball Series who have clearly just tried to just clamber on to the HBH fame. They know there's going to be people down there. There's going to be there's 45,000 people watching the HBH and they just want they just want 10%. They want they probably want 1% of those people to head across and watch the final later on, but it's not going to happen, folks. There's going to be people at McDonald's. There's going to be people walking back to Marino. This is National Beach Volleyball Series. It's not even a real sport. So I don't know what they're trying to do. They're trying to pump it up, but... They'd be happy to, to get a thousand, you know, even a thousand, get a thousand of the fans here over. And they might get a thousand, you know. Later on, after the, maybe in the, in the afternoon, the, certainly McDonald's is about to be packed with the uh, official post-race function. Uh, let's go have a chat to Adric Backmire, shall we, as we uh, call in some of these last couple of rounds. Okay. Yeah, we should have crossed Adric a little bit before, but that's okay, I'm just... Passing uh, Ryan Clark in a lovely right red polo. Um, we're going to try and get uh, Dale Clark here to interview Adric. What a historic win. This is going to be mayhem, though, for... Uh, oh, here's the top three finish. They're just posing for a photo, some media commitments. Won't be on camera. We'd like to get Megan French across here, or Kerry Fernandez, as soon as possible. We're about to interview uh, Adric Backmire. We're just going to wait for uh, my co-commentator, chief chief commentator, Dale Clyde. We're just waiting for the Channel 7. Channel 7, you got the right, Dale? 
Channel 7 have got the rights this year. We're just going to wait for Channel 7 to cross before we do the uh, famous entry. And Shah and Leo Ashman. Just fantastic effort on debut. Both looking fresh. No, they're not looking fresh. They, they've put in a bit of an effort. And very excited just to see uh, Leah finish. Fantastic effort. That, that might be some of the, some of the uh, finishing people there. We're Channel 7, we're live here now. I'm just going to cross to Dale Clark. He's got Adric. All the years of just absolutely competent abuse. Just haven't been up to scratch this year. Things went to plan for once. Uh, I was happy with everything. Like I said before the race, if I lost, I'd have no excuse. Just happy to get there in the end. Just the support along the way, seeing everyone with the cameras and in the car, yourself and Matt. It was just a yeah, great race and massive relief. Really, uh, really enjoyable to see you get that win. And was there any Times yet, but was there any point where you felt like oh, this, when did you start to feel like this might be a this race? Probably the first time was about halfway through down the broadway. The half the sand or during the sand, I thought this is all over, just the headwind. I just thought I wouldn't be, you know, doing enough. But uh, yeah, halfway through the broadway, turned around, and there was no one coming. And I was like, right, maybe they're up the top. So I looked up the top, the top section, still no one. And then the final time, I looked around, just uh, the bend here, and that's what I knew. Finally got it. So um, I to you a little bit earlier. They were into a standing ovation by the time you hit the kiosk. I think last year there was a wild wind behind the big tail. We put the lights. This year it hit me, and it feels like it's almost as strong as that wild wind last year. Yeah, it was the tough, toughest race by far that I had to do. Um, I think some of the debutants will be uh, thinking, "What the hell is this HVH about? It's absolutely brutal." Zadrick Backmire after an inspiring win, a, com a confident, convincing. Running here, 48 minutes of action. Uh, HBH Radio, just trying to find Cinta Angler here. Thanks. And uh, just gonna drag. Good work, fellas. Ah, oh, spilling. Yeah, sharp. Just uh, a late ankle injury, I believe. Just gonna find uh, oh, Mrs. Angley here, but we're also trying to find Ms. Angley, the the winner of uh, there is going around. So we're here, Channel 7 live footage has just crossed. Um, we've got Jacinta Angler here, winner of the 2011 Women's HBH. Uh, Jacinta, congratulations first of all. It's the best finish I've seen to any HBH, let alone for it to be for first place. How do you feel? Uh, I was pretty buggered after that. I was quite surprised. I haven't really done any much running lately. So, And then to see a sprinter behind me, I was a little bit worried. But it was a good ending. I'm glad I got to the end. Um, I believe there's good footage of uh, the finish. It's going to go down in HBH history. It's the gutsiest run I've seen in uh, by any HBH runner to hold off Claire Ashman, who had made up, I think, 150 metres on Jacks from the kiosk. So she's, she's done an amazing effort, but to hold on is amazing. Um, how did you see... Uh, did you see the end of the men's race? Well, I did. I thought I was going to throw up at the end of my race. So in order not to do that, I didn't see. But um, back my one, which is very good. Yeah. And it's a good day, I think. Yeah, it's a great day. The, the Germans down here have certainly been very happy that back my one. Um, what does it feel like to... You're a stalwart of the race. Um, you've raced the first two years for narrow losses um, behind 
Shelley and I think Kerry one of those years, the camera person behind Kerry last year. But to, to win in a sprint finish after um, being so close the first two years, how, how do you feel now? I um, well, it was weird not to have Kerry there at the beginning of this year, and I was a bit concerned because honestly, I haven't run for two months. I've only been riding my bike, so I was <laughs> I was a little. <laughs> A little bit worried that I wasn't even going to make the end today, but I uh, got a little bit of an adrenaline rush. I think it was the whole, I wasn't prepared, and then I just wanted to, I knew that Ashwin was behind me and that she could sprint, and I needed to get as big an advantage as I could. But, so, that was about the only plan I had. Well, congratulations, you're uh, part of history, and uh, you'll be the 2011 winner forever, so well done. Thanks very much. Just camera person uh, Kerry Fernandez just doing a fantastic job. Looks like a presentation is about to take place. Um, after the presentation we're probably going to stop the uh, coverage but we would like to thank all of the sponsors uh, Toyota, Coca-Cola Paragon Fitness has been a big part of today. We really appreciate uh, the effort they've gone to. Um, we're not far away from cr crossing live to the uh, Live to the presentation um, for the 2011 HBH winners, Adric Backmire and Jacinta Angley. Dale, thoughts on covering the presentation? Just to finish it up after that. Do you reckon we should cover it? No. Oh. Yeah, finish it after that. Okay. Mike, are you doing the presentation? Yeah. In a suit. It will be smooth. Probably won't be able to hear anything on this camera anyway, so. No, it looks stupid. Well, folks, yeah. It's been a pleasure bringing this race to you via audio. Hopefully, some people have listened to it. <laughs> no one will probably ever listen to this, but uh, once they translate it to German, you can bet there'll be a couple of million in Germany who download that. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks for sharing the microphone with me. It's a pleasure, and uh, we'll see you in uh, 2012 HBH Sunday.